Hey guys, this is Lee, and in this show, I got three experts here that are going to be talking about the 2021 50th Sunfish World Championship held at Sarasota Sailing Squadron. Here we got Eugene Schmidt, who is the most decorated Sunfish World Fantasy Champion ever, and we got the reigning North American Sunfish Fantasy Champion, Will Kresick. And we got the up and coming, everyone knows her, Emily Wagner, who does a lot of live videos <laughs> from, on Facebook. So we're gonna go over the Sunfish Fantasy game and how we think everyone is going to do. So what I would like to do is first go over the format of the fantasy game. And if anyone wants to join the fantasy game, it's open to everybody. And there's a link down below in the description. So just look at the description, click on the link and you're free to join. And what we're gonna do is you have to, as a team, it's like fantasy football or baseball, you pick sailors and you're going to think, uh, you're gonna see if they could hit a target uh, placement. So for instance, you're gonna be picking one person to finish first, one sailor to finish fifth, two sailors to finish 11th or close to 11th, and three sailors to finish 25th and two more sailors to finish 50th. There's 100 boats and 100 sailors competing, so there's gonna be a lot of sailors to choose from. And let's go over to Eugene, who's the most decorated fantasy sailing champion. And with this format, Eugene, what do you think is the strategy for you to do uh, success? Um, well, obviously, with this with this new format, with the targets, the the 25th and the and the 50th positions are are, are going to be key, right? They're 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 probably the hardest to pick from. You also have the most you know variation because you're picking on a target, and obviously, if you're looking at someone finishing 50th, there's a lot of variation in terms of like absolute value from that place, right? So you know that that's where that's where 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 uh, where this championship is going to be more. Okay, so. Uh, one thing about picking the target, so if you want to pick someone on 25th and they finish 23rd, you will get two points because it's two places away from 25th. Now, if you want to pick 25th and you finish 30th, that's five places away from 25th, so you'll get five points. And if you combine your total amount of points for your team, the lowest amount of points total for your team will be the winner. So let's go over to the reigning North American fantasy champion, Will Kresic, and I want to hear how are you going to use a process to pick your winning team? Well, my process starts with my sailing. I, I, I look at how I've done in the past. I look at my previous regattas and my previous finishes in those regattas on the water. And I find who I know is going to beat me in this regatta. I find where I think I fit in in, in the sailing rankings. And um, from there, I can choose who's going to be finishing behind me, who's going to be finishing in front of me and uh, try to figure out who's going to be in that 25th and 50th spot. Now, I, I, you mentioned the new format this year with the rules, and that plays a big difference in, in, in compared to past regattas and past fantasy regattas. Um, in the past, we were really penalized for, for sailors that outperformed our targets. And in this, it's it doesn't really matter so much if they outperform your target as long as they're in the ballpark. So you, you really want to focus on trying to get that 25th place exactly on, that 11th place exactly on. Right. And so you have a little bit more wiggle room and a little bit more flexibility in who you choose. Now saying that, um, when you're saying you are trying to figure out who you have sailed against, this regatta has 100 competitors and 48 of those competitors have never sailed in the world before like Emily. So what do you do with someone with these 48 well, I, I would say that the Sunfish World's website, sunfishworlds.org, is a really valuable resource. I can look up all of the competitors, I can look at how they've done in regattas, and try to find in those regattas people who I know how they fit into the fleet, and I can kind of compare that way. So, uh, you know, for example, if Emily has sailed against uh, Yuli in, in a regatta down in, in Florida, I can look at that finish and see, oh, she kind of finished around Lee, oh, she kicked Lee's butt here, and maybe she'll finish ahead of Lee in this regatta. And so I can kind of take that information and, and try to fit everyone together in a tier. Okay. And then I'd like to congratulate Emily, who has, I met Emily back three years ago at uh, James Island Yacht Club. She sailed her first North Americans. And from there, um, now you're at your first world after three three or four short years, right? Yeah, it's three years since I took my first that, time. That's, that's 
<laughs> sailing lesson. That's that's amazing. So can you tell us like what has gotten you? Uh, what has influenced you to go from a sailing newbie to a world class competitor? I mean, mostly I just I liked it so much that I did it so much that it was kind of an accident that I sailed. Like it's time in the boat. Everybody says so. The better you, the more you sail, the better you get. And I loved it so much. I sailed a lot. And then I think it was going to big events because I went to events when I didn't feel like I belonged there or I wasn't ready, but people were like, just go, it's great, it's Sunfish Clash. And it's true, because anybody can can come to these regional events, um, you know, North Americans, it's very welcoming. So if you come and do it, those three days of sailing are gonna make a huge difference in your overall sailing. Yeah, basically, as Emily was saying, you know, time in the boat, and, and if you have the opportunity to do races of any level, a race will teach you 10 times more than just going out and sailing around. And you'll learn from the competitors, you'll learn from sailing as better sailors, and I, that's, that's the way to get better, and that's the way to continue to improve. Now, um, Emily, when you're sailing, and you have the least amount of experience between us three, so how are you going to use your limited knowledge on the sailors? Because we don't know all the sailors, but how are you going to handle this? I, I don't think, in this case, I don't think that I have limited knowledge because this is my local area. So mm -hmm. this is Tampa Bay. I sail at Davis Island, but I sail at Sarasota Sailing Squadron a lot. And there's a lot of Florida sailors and a lot of Tampa Bay and Sarasota sailors. So for the people that I don't know, because there are a bunch, uh, I think that, um, you know, I think that was actually a really good point about where you sail. I know, you know, I'll be mid-fleet in a lot of stuff. This is a much different fleet. So if I want to pick a 50th sailor, I think I'm going to pick somebody that is somewhat faster than me. Okay. So what do, what do you think about her strategy, Eugene? I mean, I, there's, there's, there's data out there. Exactly right. You, you know who you sail against. You can, you can look at past results and, and go, hey, yeah, this person is kind of right around the 50 percentile at Worlds, and where do I stack up against them? And, and, and there may be local sailors that Emily knows here that uh, are in that range, uh, or maybe, maybe uh, slightly better, and she may get some hidden picks in there that maybe not, not a lot. A person like myself that's not in this that's not doesn't sail here I, those names i wouldn't pick them because i don't know them. yeah i feel like i have a higher inventory of sleepers yeah that's, that that's definitely true now emily sailed in the uh the women's north american championship a few weeks ago and what kind of information have you gotten from there we i know we have a few sailors from there can you give us any insight on some of the sailors that are sailing in both regattas just that the women that are sailing in worlds are very good so i wouldn't um, I would not discount any of them um, that because that was a very strong fleet of women's and a lot of those sailors are sailing. So can you name a couple of the sailors that sailed at women's? Yeah, Caroline Young won Women's North Americans and won every single race at it. And it was a big fleet, 50 boats, and a deep fleet. So that was sort of unheard of to drop a bullet um, hmm. in that, and she did. So it was also very, very light air. Um, and so, yeah. So you know Caroline Young, how does that, how do you think her skills translate to more win than at women's? I mean, she's really strong, so if it's, it's not like if it goes above five, I would, I would say, well, you know, I'm going to change my pick now. Because she, she can hang in much breezier than five, but if it's going to be 15, maybe, maybe that changes my calculus. So let, let's go to some of this information here. We have, um... Emily, who sails at Davis Island, which is home to some of the best sailors in the world. We have Jeff Linton, we have Connor Bluen, and um, who am I missing? Mike Ingham, right? No, Mike Gale. Ingham's from here. Gale. Oh, Gail Hauser. Gail Hauser. Oh, Dave, David, David Clement is in this world, mm. and he sails all the Davis Island. Well. All right, so for instance, David Clement, I don't have that much information about David Clement. Where do you think someone like him will fall? Like, would you would you pick him for any of the notes here? He's a mystery to me a little bit, but if it's breezy, he qualified to this by winning a Florida regional that it blew over thirty. Wow! And wow. so, he, All right, so if it's heavy air, David Clement is can be. I would watch out. Okay, and now, 
So for instance, you got Carolyn Young, who a lot of people don't know, but she was the reserve champion member of... Team Filipino Sandwich. There you go, baby. The U.S. National Hey, don't team be jealous of these two right here. <laughs> don't be jealous. So Carolyn sat with Eugene and I, and she was she's really, really uh, good. So now you get to sail with her, and you get to sail against Connor and, and Joe, his, his dad. Um, where would you put her in, in those type of people? So when cause we've been practicing, we haven't gotten to practice with Connor. I've gotten to practice a little bit with Joe and Jeff and David. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, she can she can hang. She was hanging with Jeff Linton very well mm. in practice. Mm. <laughs> so, 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 so look, look so, actually, mm. let me clarify something here, and, and we talk about the rules of this. Um, your picks need to be in prior to the skippers meeting. That's, that's right. That's the drop dead. We encourage everyone to submit earlier rather than later. Okay. But the breeze, in, in the case of Caroline Young, is, is absolutely important, right? A person like her, if it's a mm -hmm. if it's a dominant, predominantly light air regatta, I mean, she could really post some good results. Um, if uh, we need to get some races in on Friday where there's predicted to be some breeze, and you have two or three races, and it's more than really 25, um, you know, she's she'll 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 just have two deep races. And, and that you got to factor that in, and so you know obviously there's there's those that are light air specialists, there's those that are heavy air specialists, there's those that are you know can kind of do both, and uh, you got to you got to look at the forecast and and you know at the end of the day I guess how many picks total are there oh, nine nine nine, nine total picks. picks, you know you, you just kind of got to be close close to in the money on, on, on all of them. You know? Now, saying that, um, Will is really involved with the numbers. He's a numbers guy. He's a data guy. So, do you he's go ahead... He's not a world champ, though. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the reigning North American fantasy champion. I'm not just saying. So, like, going <laughs> right, into... Two rings. Two rings. So, going right, into... I would say that I've never done a fantasy okay. world. Okay. So, okay. let's... Oh. Does anybody... Nobody's ever done a fantasy world. Oh, yeah, yeah, so we, we, we've done them. But it's a different yeah. format. So, right. so Will, let's. Um, how do you take in consideration the weather and the the people who you sail oh, against? Oh, what yeah, else do definitely. You I mean, you have to, as Eugene said, you have to take into consideration the the weather, the wind, what it's going to be like. Because, you know, if, if someone can't handle heavy breeze, they're going to fall right out the back. And someone, you know, may, maybe I can pass people that I wouldn't otherwise normally be. For instance, in the regatta, if the wind is up, mm -hmm. so so we're gonna we're gonna put Will on the spot here. So, on for your fifth pick, if if you had to pick someone dead on for fifth place, and then your wife Lindsay says you have to pick this person for fifth, and if they do, if you don't hit them, I'm not gonna speak to you for a whole month. Who are you gonna pick? Oh come on! That, that, uh, well, I don't know. I think I would go Martinetti. I, I think I, I don't think I, I, you know, he's a good sailor. He has a shot at winning it, but anyone in the top ten could win it. So, I, I think that he's secure. I, I think he'd be either way. If, if he won the regatta, I'd only get five points. If he got tenth, I'd only get five points. So I think he's right there, right in that bunch, that top bunch, and pretty, pretty secure in there, in my opinion. I don't think he's going to drop out of the top 10 for sure. So I, I think Martinetti would be a good pick. And he'd also be a good pick for winning. So it could go either way. And Emily, so, who, who would you who would you pick for first? I mean, all right, I'm looking at it. I'm doing it right now. And I feel like there's, there's so little difference in points and in sailors between first and fifth. It's practically interchangeable. I can put, I mean, it's home cooking, right? But I can put Connor in first and Jeff Linton in fifth or flip-flop them and I feel like that's still really safe and, yeah. and, 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 and Connor is, is the reigning North American real champion and he also was <laughs> what is that anyway? I don't know Who, it's, 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 it's when they actually play on the regatta the regatta is an avid and he finished he finished the, he finished the <laughs> fourth in the midwinters in the fantasy no no in, uh, I thought in, we were talking uh, I yeah, but I'm just saying. In midwinters, she could, mid, like Emily's. Oh, oh yeah, and, Dave, and Davis Island. Yeah, yes. but mid, that was, that was yeah, midwinters results are gonna be tough. To, it's gonna be tough to take this past midwinters results. Mm -hmm. You gotta it's take those with a grain of salt because that was such a weird regatta. But I also had a comment on uh, a video where 
Connor has been really hot because he won champion champions. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Do you take that into account? Would you take that into account? No, there's, there's no doubt about it. There's a variety of conditions. Connor Blewin is, is, is one of Definitely the guys. Definitely it all it, it's, a, it's a, you know, coin flip, you know. Now, honestly, uh, and not to interject, you haven't asked me, but I think the guy, the, the favorite guy to do to win this regard who's never who's never won it and, and probably should is Mendel Black. I think mm. you're going to have a variety mm. of conditions. Uh, I think it's mostly going to be light, and he's a light air assassin. And, and he's uh, kind of local. And he's local. And uh, and he by the way, if, if, the we're, if, if we're talking mid winners, yes. he got yeah. he basically he was he was over, 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 over on the last race, but he basically went one two one. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and so uh, I and, and and by the way. Um, even on Friday, if it blows, um, he's he's gonna get you know he can he can pull off a three five on a heavy air day, no problem. He's even even as good as his fleet is in Breeze. All right, so you you spoke Eugene before that it's gonna be the twenty fifth, the eleventh, and the fiftieths that are really going to to make a difference because there's so little difference in the, in the first and the fifths. So Emily, who do you who do you lean towards on a, an eleventh pick? Eleven, I mean. Man, and now that we're talking about that, it's like I feel like that's that's also it's up there in the top. It's you're still you're practically in the top ten, so it doesn't matter. You just want to get close. It doesn't matter if they outperform with the new rules. So, I mean, even what if I put David Mendelblatt as eleven? He's that's probably going to do better than that. But no. No. Yeah, but here's here's an interesting strategy. But he can, but he can only do ten points better than that. Right. Yeah, that's you're not going to get hurt. No, you're not going to. In the in the old so, in the old format, if you overshot and you picked someone for eleventh and you got ninth, then you got like twenty points, which which is a little unfair. So this this is more unfair. This is more fair for people who don't know. So well, maybe one thing in the future is 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 instead of just um, you know. Because the top picks are aren't as valuable to get right it's also as, as one the 25th pick. or the or the 50th pick. So maybe in the future we double those points. Now that's interesting. So. And uh, before we go forward, I'd really like to thank Austin Williams, who developed the app that we'll be using, so everyone could, even if they're uh, across the world, could um, join in this fantasy world championship. So thanks a lot, Austin. He's doing it for free. But he's a will, he's a whiz, and he does this for a living. His company makes uh, high-speed apps where he can get you your product if you need an app. Uh, go check out uh, Austin's information. I'll leave a link down in the description below. It is. I'm looking at it right now, and it is. It looks great. It's easy. You're gonna be able to get on there and pick your team. Is so. that actually an app? It's, a it's, a, it's an app. It's, oh, it's basically a, you put your name, it's your, a web app. your it's a web app. your registration, right. uh, your team name, and it tells you to pick first, fifth, two elevens, etc. And I asked Austin a, a few weeks ago. He said he'd get it done in a couple of days. He got the 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 rough draft done, and then we talked this week, and he made so many changes within like two days, and it's basically foolproof that. I think I should be able to administer it. So thanks a lot, Austin. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. Yeah. Thanks. So okay, so that's an interesting strategy, Emily, that you brought up. Why don't you just pick someone who's going to finish fifth? Maybe you know a Martinetti or uh, whoever, and overshoot rather than undershoot, and maybe they'll get a twenty fifth. Oh, here's here's a question for all three of you. Who do you think that you might choose as a strong eleventh? that might finish 30th yeah. and it's not it's not because you're insulting them maybe because there's something that you might now, know now, now I, I would um you got to be careful because that's a that's a bad strategy right you want someone you want they're not, they're not you, you, you want you want someone it's because it's you know that's going to be between 8 and 15 if you want to or whatever right but I think the guy that has the highest could finish up in the solid top ten, or has had some some lower scores as Dan Hess. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't. I, I mean, you could you could pull it up, but yeah. but I, you know, he's he's got, you know, I think and I think he's he's had some, you know, nineteenths, twentieths, uh, finishes at Worlds, and I think of Dan Hess as, and I think of Dan Hess as a solid top ten, knowing him as a sailor, and so. Um, 
if he gets his act together. I've <laughs> <laughs> called I, 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 you I, out. I, I didn't say that, Dan. I'm waiting for no, you. No, no, that, no. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's out of respect. I know how good he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the New York yeah. Downstate. Right. He, he 